In this video, we'll look at how to disassemble the binary using IDA Pro and subvert the password protection. So we've actually installed a demo version of IDA Pro using the link, which is also given on the page. Uh, let's open up the binary. Now, uh, the moment we open it up, IDA presents us with a lot of options. However, uh, for this example, we can just press OK and go with the default options. Okay. Uh, the first thing which IDA does is actually disassembles the entire binary and using various internal technologies, tries to map that into the program or control flow of the program. So the first view which we actually get to see is the graph view where the program has been disassembled and uh, you know IDA actually just tries to show us exactly what is the control flow of the program. So let's actually try to correlate various parts of the program with the C file. So this entire disassembly is currently in assembly language. Uh, if you're not familiar with assembly, then please raise a request by using the feedback form to the left uh, and requesting for assembly language primer videos. So this is the main function. Uh, you know, you might be familiar with the argc, argv, etc. If we scroll down, uh, this is the part where we can slowly start correlating it with the C file. So if you notice, uh, the program actually starts, does all the startup routines, and then the first function to be called is a printf. And this is where what is happening is the please enter your password string is actually loaded and the printf function is called. Like the next step which actually takes place is scanf where user input is taken in. And then, uh, you know, whatever input the user gives is compared using string compare. Now in this example, as we can clearly see that the comparison is actually happening in this section. So the way in which, uh, you know, we should look at the assembly language code is before calling any function, all the arguments to the function are generally stored on the stack. So if we notice here, what is happening is first when scanf is called, then whatever input the user has given is actually stored onto the stack and there is a pointer which is stored onto the EAX register, right? Now before string comparison is called, what is happening is the program is actually first of all loading find me if you can, which is the real correct password onto the stack and then going ahead and loading the user inputted string on the stack. Then it calls string compare, which would return either a zero or a one, uh, basically inside the EAX register, right? So if you're not familiar with all of these terms, EAX, EBX, the stack, etc., uh, I would suggest you go through an assembly language primer. And uh, if you'd like me to make videos on that, then please raise a request using the feedback form. So once a comparison happens, then a test routine is called. What does test actually do? It checks whether EAX is zero or not. If it is zero, then it actually goes ahead and sets the zero flag of the processor. From that point on, there is a jump on not zero check. So what this means is if the zero flag is not set, then go ahead to the printing wrong pass routine, right? However, if the zero flag has been set, then go ahead and print the congrats correct pass. So as one can imagine, this is actually the path where there is a control branching happening between showing and congratulating the user for entering the correct password and or else going ahead and throwing, uh, you know, an alarm for the wrong password. And then finally, both of these finally lead to the pause function being called, right? So this is how using this very simple program, we can go ahead, look at the disassembly and try to correlate various parts with the C code. So one can imagine that even if we did not have the C program with us, we would be able to figure out exactly how this program was coded. 
so now let's try to understand how can we subvert this mechanism so very simply this is actually the place where the decision is taken whether to show the user uh, you know a wrong pass or a correct pass so let's say after the test eax eax happens uh, you know if we can go ahead and change the value of the zero flag uh, and go ahead and say that yes uh, you know there was a zero operation and hence there is uh, you know a one on the zero flag then we could go ahead and subvert this mechanism to do that the first thing we do is set a breakpoint uh, at the test eax eax call so let's right click and add a breakpoint now let's go to the debugger and start the process when we do this now ida will go ahead and start the program from within itself okay so as we can see the program has started and it is asking us to enter a password let's enter a dummy password which of course is going to be wrong as soon as we enter this the breakpoint will be hit and ida will prompt us so if you notice uh, you know we have hit a breakpoint let's actually move this aside for a second take this apart and we are here right so at this point what is important to understand is exactly what are the values in the eax register so let's actually hover uh, let's actually bring forward the general registers by clicking there if you notice currently eax has the value 1 this has happened because string comparison has failed and we entered demo while uh, you know the real password was find me if you can right now uh, at the very same time if you notice test eax eax of course is going to test the eax register for a zero uh, let's actually step forward one step at a time um, by using the step into okay now when we actually step forward what we will actually notice in the general registers is that the zero flag is set to zero simple reason being because ex contained one and hence the zero flag was not set to one right so now let's actually go ahead and set the zero flag to one understand that we have not yet executed or the jump on not zero instruction so because of which if we set the zero flag to one right now jump on not zero will actually default to the congrats correct pass so let's actually go ahead and modify this value to one now when we do this the next instruction jump on not zero will actually fail right because now it is going to look at the zero flag and say hey the zero flag is one hence i do not have to go to the routine which is at location 401301 which is this right instead i just need to go ahead and execute the next instruction which is actually loading congrats correct pass and actually printing that onto the screen so let's go ahead and now click on the play button so that the rest of the program executes normally and okay the program execution is done let's bring up the program window and notice now that even though we had entered the wrong password we are still getting a congrats correct pass right so we can clearly see in this example that by actually going ahead and reverse engineering uh, the program and at the very same time you know changing the value of the registers uh, you know in memory at runtime can actually change the execution direction of the program now there are various ways by which one could actually go ahead and put this statically into the program uh, one of the things uh, which one could actually do is patch the program uh, where you know instead of a jump on not zero we could have something else as well which directly takes us to the congrats correct pass However, we look into patching a binary, etc. in the next couple of videos. Well, that's all for this video. I would encourage you to download the demo version of IDA Pro, download the EXE, <coughs> uh, 
which is currently available on this page for the demo program and try this exercise out yourself. That's all for this video. Thank you.